Hi, everybody. This is Amy from Nexalum Bioscience. I'd like to thank all of our attendees for joining us today for our Saligo user training webinar. The topic today will be how to create and use project mode for growth tracking with direct cell counting using your Saligo imaging cytometer. It will be presented today by Sarah Kessel. She is our application scientist and lab manager at our San Diego location here at Nexalum. Also, uh, the webinar today will be recorded, so if uh, you guys would like to watch this content or this webinar after it has recorded, or if you'd like to watch it again, or pass the link to the recording um, along to a friend or colleague if you wish to share this content, you have the opportunity to do so. We will have time at the end of the session to answer any questions um, that our attendees have for us, but just a reminder, everyone is muted, so please type your questions into the questions bar, and as I mentioned before, we will have time at the end to answer your questions. So without further ado, I'm going to let uh, Sarah begin the presentation. Thanks, Amy. Appreciate it. <clears throat> Hi, everyone. Welcome. I just want to get um, a little background on the content I'm going to present today. When I first working on Saligo, I had no idea what image algorithms or how to count cells on images. So this was a little bit daunting for me. So I felt it would be a good idea that I explain a little bit of why I learned so it's not so fearful for you guys to understand how easy it is to count cells and images. So in my presentation today, I first want to cover a little bit of what an image algorithm is and the kind of algorithms that are used in the Saligo software. This will help you make you feel more comfortable when you're acquiring the images to say, yes, I know how it's going to be analyzed. So with that knowledge, you're going to be able to acquire the bright field images with more confidence. And then you're going to understand how are those images being analyzed and how to set up the segmentation parameters to count those cells in the direct cell counting. And then finally, we'll save this whole process as a project so that you can recall it with very minimal clicks to continue to grow or um, count the image the plate again the next days to do multiple days of image uh, growth tracking and then produce curves at the end. So image analysis algorithms. The Saligo has four algorithms. The first one in the bright field we're going to use today, it looks for bright centers with dark edges. The camera is actually taking a grayscale picture, and each of those pixels have a value. So black would be zero, and white would be 255. So from this cell image, if we drew a line over the cell and plotted the pixels according to this camera pixels, um, we can plot um, and see that the uh, profile of the pixels look like this. So then if you actually established a threshold, meaning a cutoff value that says anything above this threshold will be called a cell, and then we draw an outline around any pixels above that threshold, then the image would be displayed with a graphic overlay that looks like this on this uh, cell image. It's an outline of green with a dot in the center. This is counted as one cell object. So this is the concept that is um, done for the bright field algorithm in bright field. For fluorescence, it's very similar, but the the range is slightly different. So here we have where a bright green cell is sitting with a black background. So we're looking for much brighter objects in a black background. Drawing a line over this cell and plotting those pixels in a graph, you'll see the profile looks something like this. So then when you establish an intensity threshold or a cutoff value saying anything above this orange line is called a a cell or an object, it's outlined in purple. And it looks like this on the image. The dark object algorithm is slightly different. I rarely use it, but just so you know what it does, it has a dark profile. So when you change the focal plane, the cells will look dark. The pixels actually drop down below, and the threshold, we're actually looking for a threshold value that's below, not above, as we did in the other cases. So this is how the dark object algorithm works. And then texture algorithm is typically used in confluence or colony applications. And it's looking for objects larger than a cell. So it's more about texture changes in a localized area. So here you have a, a colony of cells. If we drew a line over this colony, you have the green outline defining this many multiple pixel changes in this local area. So now you understand what the image algorithms are going to be doing. 
So also in the new software I want to showcase, we have the Home tab. It's available at all times, so you can come back to this page by clicking the Home uh, tab. So to get us started, we're going to click on Create a New Scan. This will start, um, this will tell the system that we want to actually switch to this workflow. We're going to go to a setup mode where we're going to select the plate category. And you can see from the workflow diagram at the top where you are in the entire process. The brown button or tab is telling you you're currently located here. In the setup tab, we're going to select the well category, the plate profile, the list of catalog profiles are alphabetical as well as numerical. Today, we're going to use the Griner 655090. It's a black wall, clear bottom plate. Then the third thing we'll want to do is establish a plate ID. This would be a unique plate that we're going to use for the next three days, well, in this video. And then you don't have to put a description in now. There is an option at the end to put the description in later. So we'll just click Load Plate. The system will open the stage, and you'll put the plate on the stage. The well A1 is located in the upper left-hand corner if you're facing the instrument. Just click OK, and the stage will retract back inside the system and move to A1. The progress bar at the top now moves from setup to the scan tab. As you can see, the scan is now brown. You can at any time go back to the setup or home tab as they're still active. The first thing we'll need to do is select an application. For today, we're going to do the direct cell counting, which is in the cell counting suite. Just selecting this application will set up the rest of this page for the parameters that we'll need to, to um, enter. For general knowledge, this is the image display area where you're going to be viewing your images. And then you have the illumination and focus parameter setup area on the left-hand side. The plate navigation and selection area is up here on the upper right. And the well image and navigation as well as sampling is in the lower right-hand corner. So this is a single channel application, so there's only one channel. If you had a dual channel like viability, it would be swappable at this point right there. You can move your mouse over the image display area, click on the image, drag it around, or zoom in with the scroll button, as well as zoom out. In the plate map area, you have a navigation button, which moves the stage to different locations, and a selection button, which highlights the wells that you want to image. So if in the navigation mode, you click on a different space in the plate, you can see that the different wells are getting highlighted in blue. The stage is actually moving to those well locations as well. When you're in the live camera mode, if you click on this live camera button and then navigate around on the plate, you'll see the image in the image display area is updating with a new image in that well. These are just live camera images. Nothing's being saved at this point. So the first thing we'll want to do is set up the focus. So opening this focus setup uh, or clicking on the focus setup button opens this dialog. We'll click register auto. This will uh, automatically uh, examine the cells in this image, in this well, and figure out where they are in focus. When the system has um, figured out where they're in focus, it will stop, and then the hardware focus beams will be registered on the bottom of the plate. This is something you won't see, but it happens um, when you now, after registration, when you move to different wells, it just uses the hardware focus beams to find the bottom of the plate where the cells are in focus. So you can see we have the cells in focus, and there's a lot of detail inside there. Let's first work on illumination. So just clicking apply will actually allow the system to find the right illumination in bright field to return a pixel intensity. Here are the exposures at 4,000. We want to have the background of the image to be in the middle of the camera range. So here it is about 125, 130. So by clicking apply, it will try and figure out how to get that background for each of the wells it acquires on this plate. So in live camera mode, we're going to also now move down to the focus area 
and try and get a little bit better focusing because we know the algorithm works when you have the bright white center. So if you actually defocus, which if you click these down arrows, it moves one micron at a time, or you can also hold it down, but we're only going a few microns below. You can see that the cells have become slightly defocused or the center of the cell has become more white and you have a more darker outline around it. This will be much easier for the algorithm to count the cells when we get to the Analyze tab. So on average for here, adherent cells, it can range from negative 10 to negative 20. So we're in the middle of that with negative 15. This will be cell type dependent. By clicking Set Offset, the value negative 15 will be populated at the top portion of the page. This is telling the system that you're going to register where the hardware focused beams, or it will register with the beams, and then move negative 15 microns and then take the picture. So we're in navigation, let's move over to selection and then highlight the wells that we want to image. From here, you can actually just glide over the plate to highlight a few wells, or you can select them all with this blank space or deselect them all or highlight columns or rows just by clicking the letter or number. So for today's training, we're gonna actually acquire the whole plate. So this plate map navigation area is pretty big. We can minimize it just by clicking this up arrow if you wanna see the full screen. And same with the well map navigation, there's a little carrot icon. It opens up to show you some more parameters if you choose to do so. Currently, we're setting up to collect the whole image, which is actually 16 images or fields of view, FOVs. The current blue location square is where the camera is currently looking. If we want to collect less images than 16, we just lower the number of FOVs and leave it at that. But we're going to collect the whole image today. So far, we've been looking at the center of the wells. How do we actually look at the edge of the wells? So currently we're in live mode. If we just click on this plate map navigation area, let's move out so we can see the whole image. So that blue square is the image that we're seeing. If we just click on the little map area, you can see how the camera is switching to the location that we're clicking on this plate map. So you can see the edge of the well looks the same focus as does the center of the image. So that means I'm confident that the focus that we set up is gonna look good on the edge of the plate as it does in the center. If you have uneven bottom wells, you may have challenges for focusing on the edge of the well. I might recommend maybe setting up the focus more towards the edge of the wells if that's where it's out of focus. All right, so we set up illumination, focus, and well selection. Those are the three items. We just now click Start Scan, and the system will migrate over to the Analyze tab and start to acquire the images that we have set up uh, for collection. So you'll see the progress bar down here is for the scanning. It's actually showing a percent completedness. If you would need to stop the scanning, you can click the red box at any time. It will then stop the image acquisition and open up the scan and general area is covering the well mask. So this is defining where is the well um, area. So the image algorithm will only count objects inside the well mask area, ignoring anything outside the image or the well mask. So typically I'll have a well mask set between 100 and 97. In the identification section, this is covering how the system will identify the objects according to the image algorithm and the parameters as such as intensity threshold and cell diameter. This is what we covered in that slide earlier. So let's see how does that look on uh, one of the images that we've collected. So A2 has already been imaged and saved to the um, hard drive. So we just click on the edge of the well and we'll zoom in on this image a little bit. And let's turn on the graphic overlay for the cells as well as the ma uh, well mask. So you can see the cell area is picking up just the very bright cells according with these default settings as is. And as I'm actually changing the numbers, it's not updating because you need to click analyze for it to refresh the graphic overlay 
If you want it to automatically refresh, just click this auto analyze and it actually refreshes every time you change a value in the parameters on the left column. So let's just lower this intensity threshold and as you see I'm doing it, it's opening up and uh, identifying a bigger area for each cell as well as more cells. The other parameter I would also adjust is the diameter. Adherent cells in the range of 12 to 15 microns in diameter. Suspension cells have slightly different settings on average, so these are suggestions of what I would use for both adherent and suspension cells. So this looks pretty good for these images. We might want to filter out using this section called pre-filtering some of the objects that are what may not be cells. So you can use the cell area minimum. Typically, uh, I will use a range between 50 and 75 for adherent cells as a minimum. And you can see how it removes smaller objects that may not be cells. And as you move the screen around, you can see how it's doing a pretty good job. I'm very happy with that. But if we go to another well that has less cells, you can actually see, does it perform when you have very little content in the wells? You can use other pre-filtering uh, parameters like cell intensity if you have dark objects, for instance, that you want to filter out, or really bright, bright objects. But in this game, we're at, or in this set of images, we're trying to identify bright cells. So um, the other option you can filter out with is aspect ratio. If you have a circle, it's a perfect length versus width of one. So anything long and adherent will have less than one. Um, typically, I don't use aspect ratio for adherent cells, but if you have very long streaks in the plate, such as scratches, um, let's see if we can find a scratch in one of these wells. I want to show how the aspect ratio, as you increase that value, will start to remove long, long, skinny items. So here's one. It's tiny, but it is a scratch in the plate. If we increase the uh, minimum aspect ratio, you can see it's been removed. And for the minimum object size, um, the area, if you just increase it on a single basis, just keep going up on one click at a time, you start to see what the sub, uh, size objects are being removed. So I just will go up in the value if I'm not quite certain what value to use. And you can see I'm up to 75. I really don't want to go much higher than that. So we'll stay at that. OK, so it's pretty good. I think this is really pretty good considering the plate has some particulates in it. That's just one of the inherent things with some plates. I want to save these settings for later recall. If we ever want to do another experiment with Brightfield, we can usually load these settings pretty quickly. So we'll give it the same uh, net setting name as the plate ID. So I have direct cell counting 2D adherent analysis settings. And then start analysis. So the system has already finished imaging the plate. It took me longer to explain all those details <laughs> than it did to acquire them. <laughs> Anyways, so all the thumbnail images are the saved uh, um, images from each of the plates. You can see we've moved from the Analyze tab to the Results tab, and the progress bar on the lower right corner is showing the percent completed of the analysis of this plate. So as the well is finished, the data is displayed on the thumbnail image. You can see the value can be turned off by clicking the off icon here. Another neat feature is the heat map. So if you want your data to be displayed in a color code by filling in the well according to the value, you can turn that on and off. So that's the neat way to show a global um, uh, picture snapshot of what your plate is um, doing for number output. You can also change to colors if you're not into the colors that are defaultly put on there. So there are a um, couple options. There's Right now what we're looking at is a gradient between two colors. You can also do a three color one. That's um, if you want to switch to have a third 
um, value in the middle, that would be the last color orange that we're not selecting now. Here's where you can enter in information on the description. So this would be something I would recommend doing. I tend to have notes in my notebook, but it's also really nice to have notes on the plate ID and scans and analysis for the Saligos um, uh, images that you're taking. This will be easier for you to recall. So we typed in for the scan description day one, because we're going to image this for a couple of times. And then as you change over to the well and click on the individual wells, the information displays the well count or whatever application you've selected, the displayed uh, data is here. Okay, double clicking on a thumbnail image is actually going to display the full 16 images stitched together. If you double click on the image, it zooms in really to the low res or high resolution image, one micron ish per well or per pixel. And then if you double click again, it'll actually move back out to the full view of the um, image. So just double clicking on the images will do that. And <clears throat> I use that feature a lot to capture the correct screenshot size from well to well. I like to know what my pixel, micron per pixel uh, value is when I'm doing reports. You can turn on and off the graphic overlay by this little cell icon button up here. If you want to get back to the full plate view, go to this back to scan brown button. But notice up here on the plate viewing area, we have the description that we typed in is now displayed here. So when we have more scan times, you'll be able to toggle in time. We'll show you that in a second. And then also that description is displayed here. Uh, you can also change plates in after you're done analyzing, obviously, to a different plate if you wanted to at this point, at that section there. So what I'd like to do now is just grab a little screen clipping of these images that are kind of representative of this experiment or this project. So here we have a good cluster of cells. I'm just going to open up a um, screen grabbing um, and take a picture of these cells right here. I'll save it as a little JPEG, put it on the desktop, 2D adherent cells. And now what I want to do is create a project. This little blue icon down here is uh, where you would start entering the details for a project. Clicking here opens up the window dialog box. You just enter in the name of the project you want to create. I'm sticking with the theme going with the same plate ID to direct cell counting 2D adherent cell project. Notice that the experiment is actually already populated. That's because I hadn't saved one previously. So it automatically gives it the plate ID, today's date and time. Now we'll also add in that little picture icon that we had saved earlier. So now when we open up or look at the list of projects, we can kind of see from this picture, oh yeah, that's the Brightfield here install a, a project. I want to run that one. In the export objects options, you have the ability to define where you want it exported as well as what is exported, images, well level, object level, and then what format of each of those as well. So that all comes with the project mode. The experiment details, as I said, we were saving the experiment was saved automatically by the system because we didn't save it with our own name. Here are the details in extra detail. So you can review them at any time in this column here. Okay. So at this point, you can see that we have the entire well uh, plate selected, all the analysis and image acquisition settings. We're all set. So let's click Save. Now, just to know, kind of give you what's what. Um, the experiment settings remembers everything, like the application, illumination, the well format, focus, well selection, analysis, and gating. What does the project remember? The project remembers that experiment as well as the profile that you selected, as well as the export options um, that you want. And um, the plate uh, format and or the plate type, such as Griner, um, here it's already remembered. So when you go, um, 
back to the results tab, you'll notice when the analysis is done, all of the tabs are available. At this point, you can go back and navigate to scan and change any scan acquisition settings from that experiment and click save on the experiment and update things. So this is where you can edit an experiment. This is where you export the data. So this is a well level export as well as object level on the right button. This is a CSV file you can select the location of where you want to uh, save it. I tip, and then it will put it in a folder. You can do a plate-based or tabular format. I do plate-based mostly. At this point, we're gonna go to the Home tab, which takes us right back to the beginning. All right, so let's define, this first button is what we call project mode. And the second button is what we call standard mode. So now let's run this project that we just created. Click start our project. You'll see that the image that we have created or saved with the project is here. We just have to click load plate and then the stage will open up. We'll put the plate on the stage. You can either create a new ID or select one that we've already created and we're gonna do growth tracking. So I'm gonna select the same one that we just used. And then we click verify project. At this point, the stage goes back into the system. It starts to navigate to the well that we had registered for that experiment and produces a focused image. So we have confidence that the cells are in focus. You can zoom in and navigate around just on this well. This is only the focus well. It's only for verification. And you can also verify that the settings for this project are correct. If you need to make any adjustments, you would click the adjust acquisition settings. It's the blue button on the lower right hand corner, but everything looks good at this point. So I'm just gonna click run project. The system will move over to the status tab and start to acquire all the images according to those experiment settings. You'll see in the um, information section, the progress bar shows you progress a completedness and the settings are also observable there too. So the acquisition will collect and start populating the image thumbnails in the screen and then as data is analyzed the wells it will populate on top of the thumbnail images. Once the system if there was any exporting it would next export those files and you'd see progress bars for those exports. Okay, at this point when the system is finished imaging and analyzing, you have three options. You can load the next plate to run the same project, but with a different plate. Or you can actually view this result in a standard mode, which we saw earlier. Or you can finish the run, which basically takes you back to the home page we're gonna click finish run. Now we'll eject the plate and put it back in the incubator. So this is kind of mimicking what you would do on a growth tracking experiment. So you've finished a project run, you eject the plate, put it back in the incubator, and then you click okay, and this stage goes back into the system. So on the next day, you would come back to the Soligo and then start the project run again. Just click start project. You see the icon or a project that you want. All you have to do is click load plate. The system opens up the stage. You put your plate on the stage. We're gonna select the same scan ID and then verify project. The plate goes into the system, moves to the registration well, and then produces a focus image here. You can see it's much more confluent. We have a ton of cells, but the focus is still good. If you need adjustments, you could do it with adjust application, but I'm happy with that. We click finish run and it, or start project and it continues to acquire the images for the whole plate. So, the idea is the project mode has very minimal clicks and then you click finish run.
All right, so again, you eject your plate. Remove it, put it back in the incubator, click OK. And then you would have a third day of scanning. We'll go through this one much quicker. Click load plate. Select plate ID. Verify project. Image looks good. Run project. You'll notice also that the accounts for these thumbnail images are getting um, bigger, and you'll notice that the top two columns were probably pretty confluent. We're reaching maximum count confidence here. Okay, so this time around, I want to click View Result. This puts us into the standard mode. What does that mean? Well, when you click on that and you look up at the top workflow, it changes into the multiple tabbed for workflow instead of the four, now we have six. We can go to any one of these tabs, and if we want to change the focusing or adjust any analysis, we can have access to do that for this scan. Now you notice up here in the results scan, um, you can toggle in time to any one of those days. So we started on the 5th. We have two times for the 5th, the 6th, and the 7th we have singles. <clears throat> if you double-click on the well, you can see the cells. They're much more confluent than we started. But how did it look on the earlier time point? So let's change in time on this particular well in this zoomed-in location. So just clicking this left arrow goes back into the previous scan, and you'll see there's less cells on the second scan. And then here is on the fifth when we first started imaging. That was in project mode, and then we have another one in the manual standard mode. So you can see that the cells were growing over time, and the graphic overlay looks good. The data displayed it looks good. So also you can toggle in time from the plate level view. Just examine this one well, for instance, we started at 5,000, the next day was 10,000, and then the third day we have it at 25,000. So we definitely have growth going on. Let's see it in a graphic format. So clicking on reports, brings us to this page where we see all the four scans in a list. Opening it up, you can see that this analysis was done once per scan. You can individually select these checkboxes. So we have one result for each of these scans, but we need to select these scans. So changing these zeros to one, we can either individually check them, or you can right-click on any scan time, and it produces this pop-up menu. Here we're going to do, for each scan, select last scan result, and we'll pick direct cell counting, because that's what it was analyzed in. Now all of those zeros in that column are turned to one. They have been selected to produce data in the results graph. So here we have a growth tracking, direct cell counting graph. Just click Generate Report. And then each of the wells will be populated with a little graph with the data on it, uh, showing each day, um, a graph or a line representing each data's data. It, on the left-hand corner, shows a combined graph. We'll unselect that and then showcasing each individual well, the small graph updates. This is a normalized display. If you want to have it unnormalized, you just click growth chart. So now the axes will be on its own, not related to the maximum of this plate. 
The other display options are doubling time and doubling rate. So you have the ability to specif specify, say it's the third day that was the best growth for you. So you can look at the values um, for either doubling time or doubling rate for those wells or those time points. And if you just hover your mouse over this bar here and then scroll, you can see that you can change the display from time to time by scrolling on that. You can copy these um, portions of the screen to your reports, this little copy icon, and copy the data in a CSV format if you want the output in a um, text format. Okay, so that's how you make the graph report. Now let's go back to the Home tab. How can they be edited? So if we go to the Manage Data tab button down here, this shows you where your data is stored as well as your projects, your settings, and your report templates. So your data are your scans, the images you're acquiring, and they're listed according to their plate ID. Let's find our scan. Here it is at the bottom. If you click the arrow, it opens up and showcases all the four scans. You can check all of them by checking the plate ID or individual ones by specific times, and then it would be just one. You can also right click and change the name of the plate ID or modify the description in this um, portion. So say, for instance, you wanted to export this. So you would have it selected and then go up here and hit the export button. Here is an import button. Or if you wanted to create a folder project, you would move it into the folder that you selected. And then you can also delete the scans at this, with this X box here. So let's uncheck our box and go over to the projects tab. Here we only have one project in the database, the one we just created. And if you wanted to edit it, all you have to do is check it and then hit the little pencil icon. Once that is selected, the pencil icon is active and it'll open up the project dialog box. It looks the same as when we created it. Here you can change the project name. The experiment setting is not changeable but you can change whether you want to verify the screen or not. If you want to change the export location or export options. The part that's not editable is the experimental details. Those are tied to the experiment settings. They're only for viewing at this point, this last column. And then the last column is associated plates. So you had run money projects or running plates with this project. It would list all the associated plate IDs with that project on the last column. To create a new project, you just use the blue icon here and it opens up the dialogue that we had saw, seen earlier. So where are the experiment settings saved? In the settings tab, here you'll see the A's and the C's. What does it mean? A is the analysis settings that you've defined in the analyze tab. C stands for classification settings. If you had created gating settings in the gate tab, experiment is the E and that's what we had saved or the system saved for us. Here are the two items that we had created from our scanning. We have the experiment and the analysis settings that we had saved earlier. They're not editable at this location. To create a new project, you just type in the new name. Once you've done that, it opens up these boxes to be selectable. It kind of walks you through what you need to put in.
So let's go back to the home page. How can I edit this selection of the um, selection of the wells or the illumination of an experiment? We well, have to load the experiment, and you can do that either in the view and analyze images that are already saved, or you can load an experiment on the system. So let's pull up the plate ID that we have. The system does remember that we still have the plate loaded because we just finished scanning the last day. And then we'll view that result. So you'll notice when I click view result, it moves us right over to the results tab, displays all the thumbnail images and data for that plate scan. But you'll also notice that all of the thumbnails at the top are now accessible. If you'd only loaded the uh, experiment, but the plate was not in the system, the scan tab would not be accessible and you wouldn't be able to adjust the well selection or illumination. You would need to have loaded the plate to actually have that accessible scan tab. So you can see here, when I click on the scan tab, I can now change the well selection. And then I'm creating a new project. I could just create a new experiment and then create a new project back in data management tab, but I'm just gonna go straight to the project. And it, what it does, it opens up the dialog box. I put in a new project name. It already establishes a new experiment name for me with the new date and time. So it kind of does it all in one shot right here versus going back to data manage. And then I'm going to give it the same image that I had created in the previous experiment on my desktop, the little screenshot. So notice that I had not changed focus or illumination. If that was something I wanted to change, I would physically have to have the plate there to something imaging uh, to adjust it. If I don't have a plate ready, but I do want to change the well selection, you can just load the experiment and change the well selection and then save the experiment or project over. So now when we're back in the Manage Data tab, you can see in the Projects tab, we have the new project. If we open up the Edit menu, you can see that the well selection has changed. Everything else has been remembered, the illumination, the focus, everything else is remembered. We only changed the well selection. So that's how you can edit an experiment and then save it as a new project. So we've covered quite a bit today. We've talked about image algorithms to help you understand how and why it is important to get good bright field images, the right focus. It makes segmentation so much easier and then how you can save all of those process um, of image acquisition and analysis in a project mode to create growth tracking crafts from project mode acquisition. All right, so I'm gonna open it up for questions. I'm hoping that you guys got all of that, but let's see if you guys have any questions um, for parts of that maybe I didn't get quite clearly described. Thank you, Sarah. I think that was a great presentation. So as Sarah just said, we are opening up this time to answer any questions that our attendees have for us today. As a reminder, everyone is muted, so please type your questions into the questions bar, and then I'll read them out to Sarah and we can begin the Q&A session. So I'll give everybody about a minute to see if we can get uh, any questions that come through, so just type those in for us. Also, um, while we're waiting to see if any questions come through, uh, I'd just like to let our attendees know that we encourage you guys to submit uh, topic suggestions for future webinars to us at any time. Um, you can email us at support at nextlum.com. There's that email at the bottom of the slide here you can see. Um, there's also a short survey that you can take at the end of this webinar where you can give us suggestions on future topics you'd like to see, whether it's on the Celigo or any other of our um, Nextlum products or instrumentation. Any applications or cell types you're interested in looking at or hearing about, um, just let us know and we'd be happy to consider those suggestions. So I'll just wait a little bit to see if we get any questions that come through and then I can read them out to Sarah. Thank you.
Okay, well, I'm not seeing any questions come through. So, Sarah, I guess that means you have a wonderful webinar today. It was a great presentation. <laughs> I'm glad so to hear it, that. <laughs> yeah, so um, I guess that will conclude our webinar for today. Um, if anyone, oh, hold on a second. I think we actually just had a webinar come in. Let's see. I mean, a question come in. Oh, no, it was just someone saying thank you for a great presentation. <laughs> hey, you're welcome. Thank you. Great. So if, if any of our attendees um, think of any questions later on that you didn't get a chance to ask right now, um, you can always email us at supportandexpo.com. We'd be happy to help you. Give us a call. We're always here to help. Um, thank you, everyone, for attending our webinar today. And thank you, Sarah, for a great presentation. And I hope everyone has a wonderful day. Thanks, Amy. Did a great job, too. <laughs> thank you. Bye. Bye.